Hello viewers, greetings to you and welcome to my channel. Today I want to show you how to size a solar power system. In one of my videos, I told you that the solar power system is made up of different components. So you need to know how to combine these components so that they'll be able to harness the sun's energy and convert the energy into electrical energy. So there are different components in the solar system, the solar panels, the charge controller, the batteries, the inverter, the cables, the breakers, the such protective devices as the SPDs. So you need to know how to properly size each of these components so that they'll be able to give you uh, your desired output, your desired e efficiency. So uh, before you size a solar power system, there are uh, some things that you need to take into consideration. The number one thing you need to take into consideration is the power rating of the appliances in watts. All electrical appliances are rated in watts. That is the power. So you need to carry out an energy audit, a load audit. So if you have a client who is interested in installing a solar power system, the first thing for you to do is to carry out uh, a load audit. Go to the person's house, check all the appliances the person wants to use, and you look at the power rating of the appliances in watts. The second is the runtime hours. After looking at the power, the, the power rating of the appliances, you ask your clients, how many hours do you want each of these appliances to run? Your TV, how many hours you're going to use it in a day? Your, uh, your, your lighting points, your decoder, your home theater, your fans, how many hours are you going to use them? So after knowing the runtime hours, you go to total daily energy con consumption. This is rated in watt hour or in kilowatt hour. You can convert from watt hour to kilowatt hour or from kilowatt hour to watt hour. It is from your uh, uh, power, the power of the appliances and the runtime hours that you will get the uh, total daily energy consumption of the loads. Now, when you know the total daily energy consumption of the loads, this information will guide you in sizing the solar panels, your solar panels, and also the batteries. Then this one, the total uh, power rating of the appliances will help you in sizing your in Vata. Then from your solar panels, the current and the voltage that is coming from the solar panels will guide you in sizing the charge controller, your uh, uh, cables from the panel to the controller and from the controller to the batteries. Then the next one, you need to look at loads with starting or such power. There are loads that have such power, loads like your water pump, your AC water pump, you have uh, the uh, refrigerators, the air conditioners, they have starting power. That is why when you connect them to a generator and you switch them on, you will hear the generator uh, will, it will look as if there's a load on the generator. And it lasts at times for five seconds, for some few seconds. And uh, the, 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 the appliance or the load will start running on its normal power. So you may have a load of one horsepower. But the starting power may be maybe uh, 1.5 horsepower or uh, two horsepower. That is a load of 750 watts. The starting power may be 2,500 watts. And the power is not, uh, it doesn't last long. Just five, at times five seconds, and it will start running back at this uh, normal power, which is 750 watts. But the load needs uh, maybe 2,500 watts of power to start. That is why we call it, you know, uh, uh, the starting power or the search power. The next one is vampire or phantom loads. These are loads that consume power even while they are on an uh, idle mode. Loads like TVs, your chargers, and uh, other uh, loads. They, they, have, they are called vampire loads. Even when you put them on standby, they still consume uh, a lot of power. So you have to factor that. You have to take it into consideration when you're doing your system design. Then you also have loads that uses electricity to generate heat. Loads like your water heaters, space heating, uh, electric stoves, incandescent lights. These are loads, or, uh, yeah, loads that use electricity to generate heat and they consume a lot of power so you need to check all this uh, take into consideration all these factors before you properly size uh, a solar power system now when you don't take these things into consideration after sizing the solar uh, system uh, maybe you do a, a guest work uh, you have a job a client to just call you uh, i have um, i'm living in a three bedroom apartment and i need a solar that will power my three bedroom apartment and you just rush to the market, buy inverter, buy batteries, buy uh, solar panels. No, you don't size a solar power system based on the size of the building. 
you size your solar power system based on the loads, the loads that you are using the solar system to power. It is the load that determines the size of the solar power system, not the size of the building. So somebody may be living in a very big house, but he needs just few appliances to run on solar, maybe just lighting points and television. But somebody may be living in a very small apartment, but he's using heavy loads like refrigerators, water pumps, and the rest. So if you are sizing a solar system based on the house, the size of the building you're seeing, it may mislead you. Rather, what you need to do is to check uh, take all these factors into consideration. The main thing is for you to look at the power rating of the loads, their power consumption. Then you look at the runtime hours. How many hours are they going to run? It is from there you will get your total daily energy consumption. So these uh, parameters will help in guiding you, you know, to size all the components of a solar power system. So the next one, after you know, uh, taking all this into consideration. After taking the power rating, the runtime hours, the next thing for you to do is to prepare a load analysis table. Prepare a load analysis table to make the work easier for you and straightforward. So I'm going to show you how to prepare a load analysis table. So for the load analysis table, uh, you draw it like this. You have the first column here. We call it SN, the serial number. Then you have the second one, description. Then the next one is the quantity. Then the next one you have the power. In what? The next one you have the total power. Also in watts. The next one you have uh, your daily usage or the runtime hours. This is in hours. Then you have the total daily energy consumption. So for example, uh, after carrying out your load audit and the appliances that are in that building, or your clients want to power, the clients have a TV. Number one, television. And the quantity is one. You just need a one TV. And the power rating of that TV is 60 watts. So to get the total power of this television, you say quantity times power, which is still 60. 60 times 1. Then you ask the client, how many hours do you want to use this TV every day? So let's assume the client is using the TV for 4 hours. Now to get the total daily energy consumption of this TV, you multiply this by this. That is the total power multiplied by the runtime hours. So if you multiply 60 by 4, you have 240, 240 watts hour. So Number two, we have decoder. Also one, and the power is 18 watts. So the total power will still be 18 watts. And he'll be using it also for four hours because the decoder goes with the television. So 18 times uh, four will give you 72 uh, watts hour. Then we have number three, uh, we have ceiling fan. You have ceiling fan and uh, the quantity, he wants to use two ceiling fans, is two. And the power rating of the fan is 70 watts. That is their individual power is 70 watts. So the total power of this ceiling fans will be 70 times two, which is 140 uh, watts. And he wants to use this ceiling fans for eight hours every day. The total power will be 140 times eight, 
will give us 1,120 watt hour. 1,120 watt hour. Then we have number four. We have home theater. It is one. And the power rating of the home theater is 50 watts. The total power will be 50 watts. And he wants to use this home theater for six hours. So the total daily energy consumption will be six times 50, which is 300 uh, watts hour. Then the next one is the security lights. Security lights, uh, they are four in number. And their power rating is 10 watts. Their total power will be 40 watts. That is 10 times uh, 4. And this security light will be on for 12 hours every day. He'll be using them for, for 12 hours, which is uh, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. every day. Now, their total daily energy consumption will be 40 uh, multiplied by 12, which is uh, 480, 480 watts hour. Then the next one, we have uh, internal lights. That is lights in the sitting room, in the parlor, uh, in the toilet, in the rooms, and uh, uh, other uh, places inside the building. So we have them, they are uh, six in a number, and their power rating, each of them is five watts. So their uh, uh, total power rating will be 30 watts and he will be using them for six hours for six hours so the total daily energy consumption will be 180 watt hour that is six multiplied by 30 then the last one which is number seven is blender he wants to use his blender blender is one and the power rating of the blender is 300 watts so the total power 300 times 1 will still be 300 watts. And he wants to use this blender. He'll be using it for uh, 30 minutes every day. So 30 minutes is uh, zero, 0. Point, uh, 30 minutes is 0. 0.5 hours. 0. 0.5 hours. So 300 times 5 will be 150 watt uh, hour so you now have this is your load analysis table so from this table where we are going to concentrate on is the total power and the total daily energy consumption so we are going to sum the total power and the total daily energy consumption so when we sum up this uh total power we will have 638 watt hour this is the total power of all the loads then the total daily energy consumption of this load will be 2542 watts hour so we are going to make use of this information to size the inverter then this will guide us in sizing our battery bank and our solar panels so this is how to prepare a load analysis table. Whenever you are going to your client's house, always go with the chart, a jotter and a biro so that you'll be able to uh, gather all this information. So when you come back, you sit and you work on all this information. And uh, from here, you will size all the components. From here, you will know the size of inverter to buy, whether it is a 24 uh, volt uh, 3 kVA inverter or it is um, a 24 volt 2.5 kVA inverter or whatever inverter. It is from here. This information here will guide you. Then from here, you will know whether you are going to use uh, the number of 200 amps battery you are going to use or you, are, you want to use a 150 watt battery. If you want to use a lithium battery, whether you are going to use a, a 5 kilowatt battery, a 2.5 kilowatt battery, or a 10 kilowatt battery. Then also from here, you know the number of panels to use. Whether you are going to use a 5, uh, 300 watt panel, you know, 150 watt panel, 100 watt panel, 350 watt, 500 watt uh, panel. It is from this information. So. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to size the battery bank. After sizing the battery bank, we go to the solar panels, down to the inverter and the charge controller. Then I also show you how to size the cables and the DC breakers 
and also the such protective devices you use so that the system will be well protected. Thank you for watching. If you like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on TikTok and uh, Facebook. You can share the video, you can comment and uh, let me know where you're watching from. Thank you and see you in my next video.